Hi, welcome to the Calculus 2 lecture series. And um, this video, we're going to start a new unit. That's the unit number four. We're going to talk about the sequence and the series. So the lecture 15, we're going to start to talk about the sequence. And this unit is a pretty big unit. So we have uh, said many, many lectures about these units here. So let's go ahead and get started. So let's take a look at our lecture notes here. All right, like I said, uh, for, you know, for these ones here, we're going to, you know, the, for the first uh, sections here, we're going to talk about the sequences here. So we're going to, so that we talk about uh, what is the sequence, Okay, now we're going to take a look at what is the limits, the limits of a sequence. Okay, so we want to see is a converge, convergence or divergence. Okay, now we are also going to talk about the monotonic sequence. Okay, so we're going to talk about what is a monotonic sequence, and uh, or and also we're going to talk about the bounded. Okay, so bounded sequence. Okay, and uh, then we're going to talk about the monotonic sequence series. Okay, the third topic is here, and the, how do we define the sequence uh, recursively, okay? Okay, so for the, you know, so for the first, uh, the part one, the first lecture, we're going about this, uh, you know, this lecture, no, the 15th here for first part. So for this video, we are only going to focus on, um, we're going to focus on the how to find the, so this will be our first topic in this videos here. We're going to talk about, we start with the definition of the sequence, now we're going to find the limit of the sequence. Okay, so, what is a sequence here? So we know a sequence here is just an infinity list of numbers. Okay, then we use this notation, we typically use the AN right so like a brace so bracelet so this one will be a1 a2 a3 and uh, da, 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 to the an and the an plus one and the da 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 right to the infinity to the so that's why you know these numbers say they could have a pattern they could not have a pattern so that's how do we define it so let's uh, Take a look at the first uh, first examples here. So I want to find the first five terms of this sequence, right? So basically, you will say, okay, you just plug it in. So in here, we know that a one is equal to n equal to one, right? So you put the one in there. So that will be the negative one to the one. Okay, now you can do the same things for A2. A2 will be what? This is two to the square, negative one to the square. So this is what? This is one fourth. Now you have A3. What is A3 is here? It's a three to the square and a negative one to the third. So it's negative one over nine. And then we have A4. A4 is a four to the square 
negative one to the fourth, right? So this will be one over 16. And then the A5, it will be what? N equal to five, so it's a five to the square and the negative one to the five. So it's a negative one over 25. That's what we mean, the, you know, the sequence. So you can define the, as uh, some type of the formula or you just the list of the numbers here. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. All right, so now let's take a look. The next thing here, the, what is the converging or divergence here? So if this is a converging, if a sequence is a convergence, that means we use this notation here. That means we let a limit and approach to infinity and a n going to approach to some fixed uh, fixed number, right? So that means the a n value getting closer and closer to the l. Okay, so that's what is a converging. If the limit n approach to infinity a n, okay, does not exist. Okay, so what I mean does not exist. A n could be jumping around, for example, y and the negative one, y and the negative one. So you don't know whatever the value is jump to, right? So the, if a n does not exist, then we will say the sequence a n is a diverge. It's diverging sequence, right? Okay, so that is what we talk about is the, you know, to see whether, you know, your number, the sequence value, you approach to a fixed number, so not, okay? And uh, so basically you just take the limit. That's what we learned in the calculus one. When we first started the calculus one, we learned that, so you can just uh, take the limit. So the, the same limit law applied in the sequence. So for example, here, the sums law here. So if you have a limit on approach to zero and infinity, the an plus bn, and then this one will be equal to the limit and approach to infinity, the an plus the limit and approach to infinity, the bns, right? And the difference is law, just like uh, we did in the limits, uh, when we were in the calculus one is a n minus b n. This will be equal to the limit n approach to infinity a n minus the limit n approach to infinity the b n. And the constant multiplication law. That means if you have a limit n approach to infinity, you have a constant c times a n. So you can do the same thing because the C is not related to the N. So you can put the C in the front. So the C times the limit N approach to infinity, the AN. So the product law, the product law is the same thing. If it's N approach to infinity, this is AN, BN. So this will be equal to limit N approach to infinity, AN times the limit and approach to infinity bns, right? So the same way, the quotient law, so the quotient law will tell you n limit and approach to infinity an over bn, it will be equal to the limit and approach to infinity an, limit and approach to infinity bn. Of course, here, what? the limit and approach to infinity bn cannot be equal to zero, right? So if it's zero, then it's not defined. So the power rule, what is the power rule here? So if you have a limit and approach to infinity, right? And uh, an to the piece power, so just like we did before in the calculus one, you can do like this, you say limit and approach to infinity, the a n, the whole thing to the piece power, all right? And uh, so what is the squeeze theory? When the, so the squeeze theory for the sequence is just like we did in the limits in the calculus one. 
So here, that means if I have a sequence, I know a n less than equal to b n less than equal to c n, and uh, okay. So the limit, so like a limit n approach to infinity, the a n equal to the limit n approach to infinity, the c n, and they both equal to l. Then we know. Because the kind of like the sandwich theory we did it before, right? Then the limit n approach to okay, so now we say n approach to infinity of the bn is equal to what is equal to l. So here the few things we need to be careful, right? So the first thing is here is of course this one has to be, you know, bn has to be sandwiched in between, and then the an. You know the so when the n approach to infinity is here, right? So they both need to approach to the same number l, and then the b n equal to l. So here, be careful. You know sometimes the a n c n b n the first few terms is not e is not the same, right? So and the first few terms maybe you know the a n is not less than b n and the B n is not less than C n, but uh, after a certain term, then this uh, relation holds here. All right, doesn't have to be every terms, right? So that's why in here we typically put these notations here. We say for what for n greater than n zero. So here that means as long as they have a starting point after that n zero point, and then Every number in the sequence, they do satisfy this, uh, you know, they do satisfy this, uh, like the a n less than b n less than c n here. Okay. All right. So the now the last thing here we're going to talk about is we have an important theory about the sequence. These two series is a, a pretty, you know, useful series. The first one is here. So theory number one. Okay, so we say if limit and approach to infinity, if you take the absolute value a n is equal to zero, then we know limit n approach to infinity, the a n equal to zero. Because sometimes your a n could be like a negative, a positive, a negative, a positive. So they are jumping around, right? So like if this is the zero, so sometimes you have negative, a positive, a negative, a positive. But as long as, you know, when the n approach to infinity, then the things go into the zeros here. So if you take the absolute values, right, that means when the Absolute value like this one will jump up to here. Now, when they, as soon as they approach to zero, then the a n will approach to zero. Okay, so there will only work when a n equal to zero. So, for example, if limit n approach to infinity, the a n approach to, for example, like approach to three, that does not mean that limit. An approach to infinity, the a n equal to three. All right, so it's only for the you know the limit a n approach to zeros here. So this is our theory number one. Okay, now the theory number two. Okay, the theory number two. This is a pretty useful theory also. So let's say if the limit an approach to infinity a n. So if this sequence approach to some number else here, and you have a continuous function, okay? If you can continuous function f, okay? And there's this one here, the, the function is a, is a continuous function f is a continuous, at the point at the L. Then if you want to say limit and approach to infinity, F of the AN will be equal to the F of the 
else. So that means you can just replace, you know, the, you know, because of the an, you know, the equal, you know, approach to else, right? So that's why you can just uh, put the L into as your function values here. All right, so let's take a look at some of the examples here based on what we covered here. Okay, so here, the first thing is here. Let's see here, we said, uh, okay. So we said uh, one to the square, n square. So when the one to the square, n square, we know that n is getting bigger and bigger, top is a constant. So what do we have here? So it's uh, zeros, right? So the, so the limits for this sequence, right? So this sequence, the an is equal to n square to the one square. So the limits here is equal to zero. Okay, so now the second one is here. So this is a, we use the functions, right? The function series here. So if limit a approach to L, then if I have a continuous function, I can just replace it. So let's think about that. So we think this is my limit here, right? So the a n is equal to the m plus one to the n. Now I know limit n approach to infinity, the a n is equal to what? Is equal to one, correct? Right, so it's equal to one. And because we know that both, uh, they have the same powers, right? So we said the uh, numerator and the denominator, you know, they approach to infinity at the same rate. So it's one. Now, because of the EX is a function, so what is the limit here is e to the one. Okay, and uh, right. Now let's take a look at problem number three. They said determine the whether each sequence is converged here. Remember converge is a limit exists. So this one is A1, A2, A3, A4. So we know this one is what? This is a convergence here because I know limit and approach to infinity the AM, what do I'm approaching to? I'm approaching to pi's, right? So that this is a, what? This is a converging sequence, right? Okay, now let's take a look at this one. This one here is a limit and approach to infinity. And this is N, N squared plus one. So remember in the calculus one, we said, hey, the denominator is N squared and the numerator is N to the first power. So that means the denominator will approach to the infinity way faster. So what is this one here? It's zeros, right? So is this is a convergence? Yes, this is a convergence. Okay, let's take a look at the BNs here. Okay, the BNs here, so take a look at this one. So this one will say limit and approach to infinity, the BN is equal to the limit and approach to the infinity, the N squared plus one, the two N. Ha, huh. because here, right, so the top here is uh, second power and the bottom here is the first power, right? So that's why the, numerator running way faster than the denominator. So what do they go to? Go to the infinity. So what is this sequence? This is a diverging sequence. That means uh, this sequence never have a bound. It's all going to bigger and bigger. Okay, so now let's take a look at this one. See, this one is a very important, very interesting one. First, I have this negative one n, all right? Now, if I take a look, this term is here. Okay, so this term, the limit n approach to infinity n to the n plus one. So this one will be what? Because they both have the first uh, degrees, right? So they are running at, they go to the infinity at the same speed. So what is here? So it's one, right? So this is, uh, this is one. So I'm, So this is n plus, so it's one. Okay, so after that, okay, so I know this going to, this part going to approach to one, but how about this part? So the, this is the negative one to the nth power. So depends 
what is the n value if n is even you will get a positive and the n is uh, odd you will get a negative so that means that this sequence here right so this sequence uh, will go to what well so like the limit n approach to infinity sn it will jumping around one and the negative one. So they don't go to one numbers here. So what do I know here? This is a divergence here. Okay, so this is a divergence. Okay, now let's take a look at DNs here. Okay, so the DN, this, this section is very similar like the, our uh, first uh, chapter in the calculus ones, right? Talk about the limit, so it's very similar. All right, so the now I'm looking for limit and approach to infinity, the dn, right? So this is what we call the rules we talk about. What is the rule? Sum rule, right? So you can add them, you can set, you know, you add two sequence and then take a limit. It will be, you know, you, you know, you take the limit uh, and, uh, you know, for each individual one, then add them together so here, all right? Okay, so now let's take a look here. So this will be the limit and approach to infinity, the n to the n plus one, plus the limit and approach to infinity to the n squared. Okay, so let's do one more time. And so this one's here, will go to what is go to ones, right? Because they have the same power into the first power into the first power. Then this one, what is the limit going to go to? Because the denominator going to very, very big. So this will be zero. So I know based on the sum rule, this is ones, right? So here, because the sum of the limits will be equal to, you just let, take the limit, you know, when you add the sequence first. Okay, so here we just have a more problems here, right? So about how to find the limits, let's take a look here. So limit n approach to infinity cosine n, all right? So for this one, you say, hmm, how do I do that? Okay, so I know the cosine n, right? So the cosine n is what? Cosine n, is greater than equal to negative one, less than equal to one, right? Because I know the cosine value is, uh, you know, in that. Now I'm divided by n, so I divided by n. I'm divided by n, right? Okay, now I'm taking the limits of all three sides. So I said limit n approach to infinity, negative one n, less than or equal to limit and approach to infinity, cosine n, and less than limit and approach to infinity, one over n. All right, then take a look here. What is this one going to approach to? Going to approach to zero. And what is this one going to approach to? Ha, huh. this one going to approach to zero also. So by the squeeze theory, so what I know this one approach to, approach to zero, right? So I know by the squeeze, right? Some people also call the sandwich theories here. Okay, now let's take a look at the other ones here. This is a limit n approach to infinity sine x over a. All right, this one we need to be very careful here because we are doing is n approach to infinity, right? So this is the n. So here, the sine x here is nothing to do with the n. So sine x for here is a what? It's a constant, right? Because it is nothing to do with the n. I'm just let the n, sine x is a fixed number. Is it my variable right now? I want to vary is n. So what is the limit here? It's a zero, right? Because the denominator going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? Okay, so now, okay. All right, okay, 
So now that's why this one is uh, zero here. Okay, so the next one's here. I think uh, there's a uh, misprint here. Is a n to the infinity here. All right. So the n to the infinity here. All right. So the I know that when the n equal to the infinity. All right. So you take a look here. What happens here? Cosine one over n is zero, right? One over n is zero. So then the cosine zero is one. So one minus one is what? It is zero. Then one over n is zero. Then sine zero is what? It's zero over zero. Then you say, oh boy, you know, the I got a zero over zero. Then you say, what can I do here? Then you say, oh, I can do is I can use the local pattern rules, right? So because I can take care of the local pattern rule, okay? So I can treat that as a function here. So the now I can say here, I say the limit, you know, the I can replace with a function. I will say the x approach to infinity. And then I will say one minus the cosine one over x and the sine one over x here. And uh, now, you know, this one, because I know I can read the n's here. Remember that is the series number two here, right? So you can replace it with a function. So like right now I'm replacing the with a one over, you know, the, this function is here. Okay, so now I'm by using the local petals rule. And uh, so this is X approach to infinity, take a derivative. So cosine negative cosine, cosine is a negative sign. So it's a positive sign, one over X. Now chain rules, right? So negative one to the X square. Okay, sine is the what? Sine is a cosine one over x times negative one x squared, the chain rules, right? Okay, so now I can see here, this one done, done, this one cancels, right? So now what I have here, I will have, uh, this will be the limit x approach to infinity, the sine one over x cosine one over x. So this will be the sine zero and the cosine zero. So it will be zero over one. So the limit is zero so here, okay? So that's what is the, you know, the, the limit is very, very similar like what we learned in the, you know, the calculus one so here. Okay, so the now let's take a look at the more practice here. So the, we said, uh, first things here, no, I like those uh, concept the type of the problems, right? Because it's really test to see how good you understand. So if they say, if AN and uh, BN, they both uh, converge, and then the AN plus BN is uh, converge. Is, uh, is that a true statement? Yeah, because I know if I, add the two, right? So if I add the two, then the, they will be converges here because I know limit, you know, by the sum rule, right? So by the sum rule, right? Okay, so now let's take a look backward. So if they say A and the B and both diverge, then A plus B and will diverge. It's true or false? Ha, huh, this one is false. Why? Because I can find a contrary example. So for examples here, I can say the an, this sequence the an, I can have an is equal to n to the square. Then I can have this sequence bn, then I can have this one bn is equal to the negative n squares, right? So when n go to infinity, both of them diverge, but then you say an plus bn. Oh, oh, what is an plus uh, bn here? It's a constant, right? So it's a constant. 
And then I know the limit of n approach to infinity, the a n plus b n is equal to what is equal to zero. That means every turn is zero. Then that's why the limit is equal to zero. So this one we need to be very careful. So let's uh, right. So let's uh, be careful. Let's why the you know the is false here is the divergent part. Okay. All right. Number C is here. Okay, so the then the number C say if a n less than b n less than c n for all the n and the a n and c n converge and then b n converge is this is true or false? Well, in fact, this is a false. The reason why our squeeze theory work. If you remember, we go back to here. So what do we say here? You squeeze, but they all have to go to where? Go to a fixed, right? So they have to go to a fixed numbers here. So right now, both the A and the C and converge, but they don't converge to a fixed number. So it doesn't guarantee the B N will converge. I can give you a one counter examples here, right? So let's see here. Let's say that a n is equal to negative two n times n plus one. And then I said uh, uh, c n. Okay, now I can say the c n is equal to uh, two n plus n the n plus one and I can have a bn is equal to negative one to the n's power. So for every so if you use this sequence I do satisfy a n less than b n less than c n right so this one this one will converge to what negative two and this one will converge to both positive two. So both A N and C N they have limit, but unfortunately these two limit they don't equal to each other, right? So that's why they cannot guarantee. So B N is here in terms of B N, you know, you're going to jumping around one and the negative one. So B N is a divergent. Okay. So B N is a divergence here. So, so be very careful. And I think those are very, very good concept of problems. So when you use the squeeze theory, make sure the both limit you need to go to a fixed numbers, right? All right, so now this one is a pretty, uh, I guess it's a pretty easy. So let's, uh, this we use the sum rule. And uh, so let's say the limit S N equal to four, T N equal to two. So this one, you can use the differences rules, right? So we'll just be A times four minus two times two, right? So this is will be the 32 minus four, so it's 28, so it's super easy. So for this one here, it's just a three times SN, so it's a three times four and uh, over two see here, it will be six. See here. So this is we applied the, uh, the differences, uh, differences rules, right? For the limits here. And this we apply the quotient rules here. All right, so the, this is our first video about the, our lecture number 15. We're going to have a several parts of the lecture number 15. So the first ones here, we just talk, covered the first topic. What is the sequence, all right? How do you find the limit of its sequence? And is it converging or how to identify this sequence is a conversion or a divergence here, all right? So it's a pretty easy start. All right, so the, I guess I will talk to you in our other video then. Okay, bye-bye, have a good day, all right?